most respected Rotary District Owner, Mr. M. G. Ramchandra Murthy. We, when he called M. G. R. Murthy, I really wondered. Yes, our M. G. R. means our M. G. R. Tamil Nadu M. G. R. So I found that after coming here, I found that there is exact some similarities between that M. G. R. and this M. G. R. And this one. And respected Dr. Narayana, Director, National Education Society, the most respected Rotarians, and the August audience participating in this conference. I do not know what to say. It's a good morning or good afternoon. It's exactly 12 o'clock. Both good morning and good afternoon to all of you. I must thank Dr. B. N. Suresh, was my guru, as well as Dr. Narayana and Sri M. G. R. Murthy for giving me this opportunity to participate this August gathering. I am extremely privileged uh, to address the District Rotary Conference. In fact, this is the first of its kind for me as an experience to come out of the technical field and mingle with service society. I understand the Rotary International District 3182 is dedicated itself to serve the needy people in the rural area with a very excellent motto of service above self. First, let me compliment and congratulate the Rotary District for doing excellent service to the people in need. I am extremely happy to see the similarity between the motto of District uh, uh, Rotary as well as the vision of ISRO, which is actually telling the vision of ISRO is mainly to serve the people of the country, this application of space-based technology for the benefits of the common area of uh, man of the uh, country, especially the un underserved and unserved people. That is a motto. You may ask how the space technology are used for the remote areas. You are aware only 30% of the Indian population is residing in urban area, whereas 70% 70 70 of the people is residing in the remote area as well as rural area, wherein the advanced technology really enjoyed by the urban people are not reachable for the people who are uh, staying or uh, living in the remote area, this mass is 70 percent. Now just imagine the, the, the 70 percent of the country is not reaching with the advanced technology. Do you expect the country to develop? And it is essential to ensure the country to be developed, all the citizens, whether from urban or from the rural, they should really get the benefits of the advanced technology as equally. That is that really objective of the space system. And uh, really, we are using space technology as a tool for this purpose. This I will explain sometimes later. Now, come to today's function. This year, district Rotary Conference theme, I understand, is within quote, changing lives through service. What a fantastic theme. This really is a need of the hour. And my talk also in similar line with the theme of the conference, instead of uh, changing lives through service, I am talking the changing our approach for meeting the present 
as well as for the future, sustainable future, through integrated approach in science and technology, this we need a change. This I am going to talk, that is the theme of my talk. Let me first explain what it is. To create the environment for sustainable future, we need a sustainable development. But what is sustainable development? This means meeting the needs of the present people without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. This is a very, very important item or agenda right now. It is going on globally because of the specific reasons. And I am bringing this particular point to this August gathering because you are involved in serving the people. You have to keep the sustainable development goal in the mind, whatever service you are doing. Why this particular area is so important? In the next 30 years, that is by 2050, there will be rapid growth in the population, not only in India, but globally. You can ask, so what? Okay, we are producing children, and we are, they are feeding, and what is the big deal? This growth is there, and what, what is the need for uh, worrying about all these things? Definitely, the, the increased population, obviously, the meet the need requirements, the existing resources in, on the earth is not, pre, not sufficient. It definitely, it will put pressure on the natural resources. The statistics is like that. By 2050, the population of the present, the, the planet Earth is expected by 9.7 billion. That is, 9, 970 crore population is going to be there in another 30 years. Most of us, how to face this problem? We are going to see this particular scenario. To meet this increased population, as per the statistics, there's a 54% increase in the global food demand when compared to the present, and about 56% increase in the energy demand compared to the, the present available resources. Okay, what is the impact of all these things? Definitely, we will be able to meet the food. Without food, we cannot survive. And definitely, we will meet the requirement of the energy, because without energy, we cannot survive. But you have to keep in mind the increased demand in energy and the food definitely have other adverse effects like environmental challenges, like pollution, water scarcity, and adverse climate changes. All these things will come along with the extra demand. These are the area the global leaders now harping on. Recently, our honorable prime minister talked about the climate change effect, and India is going to really contribute for the global climate change effort alleviation. Definitely, this extra demand on the food and energy, along with the adverse effects of the environment and climate changes, definitely it is going to put stress on the population. And we are also going to be one among them. The present development model definitely will not be sufficient to meet the population of 10 billion people. If we are stay in the present model, definitely we are taking the risk of intensifying the cycle of scarcity, growth opportunities severely capped, and our natural landscapes severely going to be degraded. Definitely, if we are not changing ourselves, if we are not changing our way of life, definitely 30 years from now, we may not have this conference, Rotary conference, because there will not be sufficient energy, food, 
climate will be available to meet the Rotarians like this. You have to keep it in mind. If we follow the present model, we can expect the global temperature rise to 3.2 degrees Celsius, worsen the air population affecting 4.0 billion uh, more people, overfishing by 84% of the fish stocks, greater water stress affecting 2.75 billion people. I want we should not be one among them. We should right now itself prepare ourselves how to overcome this one. However, if we make changes in how we meet the food, water, energy demands for the same growing global population and wealth, the future can be looked definitely better. This is called the sustainability. The sustainability path, if you are following, instead of 3.2 degrees Celsius, the global temperature will be limited to 1.1 uh, degrees Celsius and zero overfishing with greater fisher yielding, 90% drop in the exposure to dangerous air pollution and fewer water stressed people reverse agriculture and field. Therefore, it is essential to achieve the sustainable future for both people and nature. But how? This is possibly possible only with an integrated effort, not only one place, at global level. Definitely, it is not the biophysical limits of Earth, which is going to determine the future. It is we is going to determine our future. If we are thinking differently, and by putting economic development and the development of the, uh, the, the, the people on the equal footing as the central part of the same equation. How to achieve this is, I will explain how. First, I will talk about energy. The most pressing need for change is, the, is in the energy use. In order to meet both increased energy demand, at the same time, to keep the climate within safe boundaries, we will need alter the way of we live, of producing the energy, the way to curtail the emissions of carbon, and other harmful chemicals. If we continue to use the carbon emitting fossil fuels as we are doing today, in the next 30 years, fossil fuel, uh, fuels will have to meet 76% of the total energy by 2050. Definitely, the increased demand or the increased use of the fossil fuel is going to produce equally harmful gases, it is going to affect our environment, and it is going to affect everything on the earth. That we have to keep in mind. So the better way is reduce the level of usage of fossil fuel from 76% to 13%. Make it so small. Now how to compensate the extra demand? Definitely, we have to uh, the increase that uh, renewable energy sources by 54%. At the same time, increase the nuclear energy sources by one third of the, the total demand. In fact, everybody is worried about that nuclear power, nuclear energy. Nothing to worry. It's the most safest uh, that energy source available. We need to aim for that. By that way only, we are going to meet, we should meet that energy demand. At the same time, all these three things, when you are doing, definitely this is going to have a negative impact. Now, how to overcome this combination? Here only our efforts are going to come. One is to meet the energy demand. At the same time, how to meet the negative impacts? 
in order to reduce the climate it is uh, in fact it is essential to draw down the existing carbon from the atmosphere here only the services from rotary club and other things were going to come in the picture this can be done through greater investment in the carbon capture and storage efforts including natural climate solutions land management strategies such as avoiding forest loss reforestation investments in soil health and coastal ecosystem restoration now i come to the impacts of the renewable energy renewable energy also even though it is looking very attractive it is going to create its own problem it is not that simple increasing that renewable energy infrastructure will present land use challenges renewable energy production takes up the lot of space causes its own negative impacts on nature and its services to the people by this can be managed judiciously by use of the non productive land for renewable de de development lessening the impact of new wind and solar effects as well as natural habitat now come to water water presents a set of challenges what if that there is a saying if there is a third world war you know something is going on between ukraine and russia that you forget if the third world war is going to happen it is going to happen only for water i am telling you this is the prediction so such a water is going to be the most precious item in the world in the coming years it is necessary to preserve the water and ensure that our future generations also enjoying the benefits of the water and uh, the fresh uh, water resources are dwindling well ocean ecosystems are overburdened by unregulated fishing and pollution with current practices of uh, economic development nearly 2.75 billion people will experience water scarcity by 2050 if here main uh, consumption of water is in the farming and we today we continue to grow crops which require huge amount of water for irrigation that we are doing in the many water stressed region this is the region this is the reason exactly there's a fighting between tamil nadu and karnataka i am coming from tamil nadu i am now right now residing in karnataka now i am pulling that the karnataka side because of that uh, water requirement for irrigation it is because it is unplanned way why we are using such type of that uh, unproductive area using water for agriculture this we have to think how to do it this is mainly because it is uh, not to disturb the farmers cultures we as politicians doesn't want to change neither uh, uh, karnataka chief minister or tamil nadu chief minister both will have their own demand because they don't want to change their stand and the technology is available right now only for that and the existing crop is only for maintaining that one the practice has to change gradually by concentrated effort in all major agrarian economies crops which require more water should move to the region which have abundant water supply subject to the climate sustainability in addition advanced science and technology to be used for reducing the water usage for farming activity additionally changes in energy sources in food production would lead to water savings by reducing the water as a coolant in energy production as well as moving the crops to the areas where they need less irrigation it is not only uh, important to cover each large areas conserve large areas but to represent different kinds of habitat if we continue as usual we are going to lose more than half of the several major habitat types by mid century but with the proposed shift in food water and energy use 
we can do better for uh, needy all uh, habitats our more sustainable scenario now we have two problems on hand protecting the nature and providing food and the water and energy to the world they can be that no longer be either on proportions Def definitely they cannot be considered as a individually we have to consider both human development as well as that uh, nature to be central parts in the same equation how to solve this problem definitely nothing's great we have a solution we have at our disposal a wide range of science and technologies to make informal decisions for good life on our planet and let us use it wisely that's all to achieve the global goal of sustainable future in an efficient and optimal fashion we must use all the science and technologies in an integrated fashion recently our honorable union that uh, science and technology minister dr jitendra singh took a major effort of integrating outputs of all the science and technology ministries because right now science and technology departments are working in silos they are working and they are giving their own output but it is essential to bring all these people together then only this problem can be solved this aspect is well covered by our honorable prime minister also and many time he is insisting on the integrated approach of science and technology then only we can uh, take, uh, meet the requirements of the sustainable future without that definitely it's impossible to meet including the climate change and uh, why the integrated approach in science and technology i will give one, only one small example you are aware for the disaster warning our space people are telling very greatly that yes we have done the job of this that the space technology is really giving the disaster management very effectively and even though the space people are telling that i have done the job definitely not only the space people required space people spacecraft is give only images nothing more but to convert this images into information we need another 90% of the work we need a prediction strategy we need a data analytics we need that uh, the, the artificial intelligence with the whole sorts of using the different technologies only the final is final product is coming as a product as a disaster warning for whenever some flood is happening or cyclone is happening it's not just by space alone of course space people are taking the advantage and they are gaining all big thing all other people are going down that's a different issue but really it is a combination of the different technologies that only made the system in the loop now second one is you talk about the potential fishing zone identification that you know the fisherman now they need not struggle for uh, uh, fish they have on the apps where the the fishes are available and where they have to go everything is available in their mobile through apps simply just switch on the app they can go through the towards that direction and they can catch the large amount of fish without any problem with low least amount of fuel expenditure thousands of crores of money we are saving because of that at the same time the fishermen are doing one more bad thing that you are aware very very frequently we are seeing that our uh, the sri lankan uh, military has captured that our fisherman there's a question don't you have an app for that we have app what fisherman is doing they are finding that there's a good fish catch in that uh, the sri lankan waters and they are switching up the app and they are moving towards to catch the fish our people are very very intelligent even though we are giving don't cross they know how to cross to get more benefit so this type of things are going on this also done not by only the satellite alone it is by a combination of different technologies it is not only by space but 
As I said, the space is getting name, other fellows are not getting name. Just, just like the normal world, some people will be looking very, very hard work, somebody else will be getting benefit. Like that we are doing. In fact, it's a combination of many, many things. Very interestingly, even to get the best product from space technology itself, we need the advancements in electronics, optics, communications, robotics, etc. Without that, the space system will not exist. And in fact, somebody was asking me, what is the space system? Well, how, what studies I have to make it come to the space, dynam as, as space area? I told you, you need not do anything. Anybody, any system, any discipline under the sun is required for the space system. Only thing is, we need the excellence in that area. That's all, nothing else. I can give one more example, a car. Car, olden days we have the ambassador car or Fiat. Nowadays, very, very that eff efficient cars are coming. How these cars are coming? Is it only because of the engine efficiency? No. This is the culmination of the efficiency of the engine, the material, aerodynamic shaping, hydraulics, automation, electronics. Everything put together only it is bringing. So in every product we are talking, unless we are bringing the integration of the different disciplines, we will not achieve the optimization. So, in order to achieve the sustainable development and the future, it is essential to follow the integrated approach of science and technology of various disciplines. Definitely, by doing that, by changing the way, we can make an impact and we can show to the world, yes, we can achieve the sustainable future. You can ask, so you boy, you are coming from the space department, you are talking about sustainable development, what you are doing? Definitely, space, science and technology have a major role, major potential to contribute directly or indirectly the, all the sustainable developmental goals. The space science really includes disciplines such as astronomy, aerospace engineering, space medicine, and astrobiology. Space technology really related to Earth observation satellite, satellite communications, and satellite positioning like that. Applications like weather forecasting, disaster warning, remote sensing, global positioning, satellite television and communication systems, as well as wider scientific field such as astronomy and earth sciences, etc. all rely on the space science and technology. I will talk about some of them. When I talk about the earth observation satellite, and whenever this, uh, the satellite launch is happening in, uh, uh, in Shar, all of us are watching from the TV and you are enjoying that 15 minutes of the rocket travel. And that's all. We thought that the rocket is over, the, the space technology, the activity is over. In fact, this 15 minutes, acting, whatever rocket is doing the job, it is not anything to do with the space applications. Whatever the, the rocket is carrying inside that one, that is satellite, that is staying in that space for 15 years and doing the service. That is really one that nobody is bothering. Everybody is thinking that only rocket, 15 minutes they will be happy and clapping and going. And uh, the, after that I used to give address to television, they will clap. And everybody is thinking that I am I have done a great job, but I have not done the job. But the satellite sitting in the satellite in the rocket only staying there 15 years and doing the job. What is the type of services it is doing? Real Earth observation data from satellite is used to overcome various challenges such as water management, air pollution, marine ecology, and forest preservation. Earth observation for satellite platform is an essential tool for managing natural resources and environment. It provides information to support agricultural production, fisheries, freshwater and forestry management. And it can help to monitor activities that are harmful for the environment such as illegal logging, mining, poaching and fires. 
Yet observation satellite data is vital for agricultural innovation, modern agriculture, and precision agriculture. Space technology is a value to farmers, agronomists, food manufacturers, agricultural policy makers who wish to simultaneously enhance production and profitability. Remote sensing satellite provide key data for monitoring the soil, snow cover and drought and crop development. Rainfall assessments from satellite, for example, help farmers plan the timing and the amount of irrigation needed for crops. Accurate information and analysis help to predict the region's agricultural output well in advance and can be critical in anticipating and mitigating the effects of food shortages and uh, famines. Today, the space application support the monitoring of crops from space using satellite data and algorithms of land use and land cover. It is also used to monitor disease pattern, understand environmental triggers for spread of diseases, predict risk areas, and define regions that require disease control planning. Earth observation data, data is also used for really forecasting and disasters such as floods, cyclone, forest fires, landslide. Satellite-enabled meteorological tools help to understand Earth's atmosphere and oceans and support weather forecasting. Thanks to these factors, significant progress has been made in predicting, monitoring and managing climate and weather-related disasters through advanced meteorological tools. In our country, we saved countless lives and property due to cyclones, floods, as well as forest fire. When the satellite technology was not there, Whenever that cyclone hits the east coast, we used to lose something like 22,000, 25,000 people die. Now, because of the satellite data and using all other technologies, we are able to predict at the path which way this is going to travel. By this process that we are able to, the government is able to shift the people the other direction. By this process, instead of 22,000 people, now, the death rate has come to 22, the thousand is missing. This is the advantage whatever we are gaining from our uh, system. And uh, uh, satellite data is used to access the impact of the human activity and climate change on the coastline on, and monitor coastal erosion. Satellite images help to rapidly identify illegal boats and ships navigating in our economic zone waters and detects those engaging in illegal fishing. That's what really we are not doing. The, the, the Sri Lanka is doing on us, this one. That is what exactly doing. Satellite data is used to identify potential fishing zone. Navigation services help fishermen to reach locations which have high fishing potential. This ref definitely reduces that uh, diesel and other things. Now come to that uh, communication satellite. Access to terrestrial network is limited or non-existent in many parts of the country, particularly in remote areas. And we are enjoying, simply you please put in, in our mobile, whatever you want, you are getting online, the data. But you have to imagine our friends sitting in the northeastern region, whether they are getting the same benefit, no. We are not really getting. How making that our friends in the northeastern region to enjoy the benefit we are having, it is through satellite thing only. Communication in such areas are under used for deliver of broadband services, either on their own or in combination with ground-based networks. Access to high, why this is required? Yes, it is only for enjoying or play the games or only to that, uh, see how enjoy that movie or this one. Actually, the purpose is not. 
but people are using for that one. But the real reason is the way this access this high quality internet services to make the citizens avail of the avail of the benefits of many government schemes directly. There are so many schemes that government has made. It is reaching only to some people. Lot of people are not aware. I am sure that whether you are yourself is aware about whatever schemes available, you go to the government side, then you will understand what is the type of schemes available. And the broadband connectivity always also improve the awareness about such systems and policies, which empowers the citizens to make the informed choices and decisions. And not only like that, the novel satellite applications like telemedicine and teleeducation reduces the urban concentration of these services and make them more accessible to common man. Especially this telemedicine and the teleeducation is a system we must make use of that, that one when we are that, that uh, district rotary services like this. How to make use of this one so that the people in the urban areas or unreachable areas can get the benefits of the advanced treatments what the urban people are getting or getting that the advanced education what are the, are the urban people are getting directly they can get on their, in their home. That is advantage. And it is not only the space technology is giving only this type of activity. Whatever the byproducts of the space technology that is we call it a spin-off is really going to be used, or being used daily, many, many, this one, like a fire resistant paint, as well as the chemicals, which was used in space technology, was transferred to chemical industries. By this process, thousands of crores of money we are saving in the petroleum industry. Similarly, the lithium-ion battery, whatever we produced or we developed for a space system, now it is uh, being used in the car. Or, uh, the, when I was director VSSC, they also established that it can be utilized in car. This is our lithium-ion battery. That is going to give you a green uh, that, uh, energy system. This is like that many, many technologies, whatever developed by the space department is now transferred to the, the industries for doing that other job. Now, having talked about the space technology, how to make use of the space technology and how to avail the space technology. As I said, the rocket is not the space technology, the, 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 not the real application point. It is only a carrier of a satellite, which is going to do that one. So, we need a advanced satellite. Today, just now, I heard that uh, some of the students came that they are doing their excellent uh, the satellite. Actually, we have to do the satellite. Satellite is a more uh, the life for us. This satellite is only going to do the real service. So, we need a technology for that. Now, to carry the satellite, see, this satellite has to be placed in certain orbit. Then only we can really that, uh, keep the satellite in space for 15 years and it can do services. Now to do that one, how to achieve? To ensure that the satellite is in space, we need the minimum velocity speed required is something like 27,500 kilometers per hour. Like we are talking about a bike, we are going with 50-60 kilometers, we are happy. If it goes 80 kilometers, people began sitting behind the head, hey, don't go, don't go, this is you are going to hit. Car, 100 kilometers, 120 people used to shout that uh, uh, the son used to drive, father sitting behind, he will hold his car, collar, don't go like this speed, 120 kilometers. But the satellite has to be placed at the speed of 27,000 kilometers per hour. For communication satellite, we need the velocity speed, something like about 53,000 kilometers per hour. You are aware that recently Chandrayaan we had to go to Chandrayaan mission, Chandrayaan uh, project that mission, we need to inject the satellite with 60,000 kilometers per hour. Just imagine. 
So this is a requirement. The satellite is one point, but the satellite has to be placed at the right orbit, and the, any orbit is not okay. For doing the Earth observation satellite, we need to place the satellite in a particular orbit, so that it, whenever it is crossing that India, the same good sunlight should happen. Then only we can monitor the system. So we need to put the satellite in the so-called sun synchronous polar orbit. And also to get a communication, we need to put the satellite in that uh, communication orbit. Like that, this, this type of speed, velocity, speed is required and orbit is required. Now, who is required to, who is there to carry the satellite from Earth to, to space and put in the satellite? That is only the rocket is doing. Okay. Rocket is doing the job. Just imagine it, its life is only 15 minutes. Within 15 minutes, it has to do the job exactly, precisely, otherwise the whole job is gone. This one. The 15 minutes job, that's what the people sitting in front of the, the terminal. The 15 minutes is like a, that, a hell in their life. They will ensure that, that how to go to that orbit, this one. Now, we have such type of vehicles are there, PSLV, to launch the satellite in the Earth observation satellite. We have the GSLV, GSLV, Mar 3, to launch communication satellite. And we have that, uh, that uh, small, small satellites also now come into the picture, different satellites, and wider variety of satellites, everything is available. Now, when we are doing all these things, you may think that, what the hell you people are doing for the Chandrayaan? Is it only for uh, fancy? It is not so. People are thinking that the Chandrayaan mission is for fancy. It is not so. It is really doing the science purpose. You would have seen the recently what are the type of sciences it is creating. And also the way the science is required in future, definitely to ensure the sustainable future. I would, at one point of time, today we are talking about 2050. When we are talking about 2100, at that time there is no energy will be available on the earth. We have to depend the energy from the other sources. For that we have to travel. That's itself, now itself we are preparing ourselves to develop the technology to go there. Like the, similarly, the Gaganyan mission, the human space mission, it is not for just for fun. That is, when we are really, that at 2100, at that time, what we need to do to go there, we need the human also to go there. For to make the human to go there, what we can do, Definitely, it is possible to technology now itself, so that at the time of uh, that uh, need, we have the technology on our hand. So we are preparing ourselves. So we'll say, what are the, the benefits of space technology we are enjoying today? Is really the technology initiated by Dr. Sarabhai 60 years back. So definitely, for our generations after 50 years, now itself, we have to prepare ourselves to put them in the loop, this one. Now, what is that the future of the space science and technology? Definitely, earlier we are talking about observing the Earth from space, that we use the space technology. Nowadays, space is used as a tool to provide the technology to the common people, like uh, that, uh, that Elon Musk is launching thousands of satellites for uh, making internet, this one. That is the present scenario. Future. We need to go to outer planet, other places, to search for uh, the resources. Like our olden days, something like 100 years back, people used to, we, we have read in our history book, people have traveled from one country to other country to earn some money to fuel like that. Now, after 50 years, definitely, we have to travel from Earth to another planet to do this thing. For that, we need a good amount of system. This way, that is, uh, big, big rockets are required, big, big satellites are required, and uh, definitely, that is for uh, meeting the future demand, sustainable future, our uh, government really taking a lot of effort to ensure that the people are not suffering. In advance itself, they are taking action. And, and along that, that, not only the government, we also 
should ensure that that uh, we are helping them and that the way change of life so that we can ensure that uh, together not only government that together we people along with the government let us change the way of life to ensure that we will uh, ensure that we will have a sustainable development to get the sustainable future and definitely all of us especially that uh, the, the daughter districts have a major contribution in that one i am sure that they will work on that and they will make india as globally number one country in the world thank you jai hind hello the future is here in front of us two students are allowed to ask only two questions and dr shivan has graciously agreed to take two questions from the future yerad question ig avakasha ide chetan students in the delegates in the all Good afternoon sir so you told 2100 years after we can develop our india so you can include the teen ages also in the development right sir definitely sir, you are touched the right point teen ages should get involved in the development then only we can ensure that uh, that uh, new india in future this yes, one yes sir you can teach the new teenagers for the development of satellites you can teach them about those satellites and yes rockets. we have a lot of the systems there that is that first of all for the school children there is a program in isro we started some few years back that the uvk yes. and this is for that the high school students for this year's program yes. is open that you can get involved so that you will be learning how to make satellite so please uh, go to the site and see that is our one thing sir but you can make that in the each and every school right sir definitely we can make in each every school that is our one thing second one is that is that uh, we have that uh, uh, that uh, the, the research centers in, in some engineering colleges some regional colleges are there so we can attach yourself with that and the third one is we are not satisfied with this one we are going to create at at least we initiated this is a national space innovation center very soon it may come in maybe another 6 months to one year national innovation space innovation center wherein that uh, the students can go and get trained in making satellite and i think and they can make the satellite and that definitely when they are making the satellite isro will be able to launch with the free of cost for you without asking any money we will launch you thank bring you, a, you bring a satellite we launch <laughs> thank you sir last question good afternoon sir myself tanvi pishetty my question is many indian students many indian scientists actually study in india but the uh, uh, but the desire to work in uh, other uh, isro uh, the other uh, space uh, uh, space research centers like nasa sir why did you decided to work in uh, india that is isro sir what was your ambition and why did you dedicate yourself to india see i got uh, education from that uh, government school that means free education government has spent money for that my education as a citizen is my duty to give back to india that's what i did i had done i had a chance to go to nasa and uh, very interestingly that nobody is aware very few people will have aware i told i don't want to come and uh, that is the whole philosophy thinking that i am a madman this one 
And he said, okay, you can be, I can be madman, but I wanted to give back to the country what I got from the country because I educated from the government school, which government has spent money for that. Thank you very much, sir. We are Thank very you. proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just one visit of Dr. Shivan has enthused the whole city. This evening, we have got an interactive session at JNMC. I don't know how he is going to handle that because students are so thrilled about his visit. Thank you.